and medians. Thirty seconds. One thirty. Star Trek, the original series, <clears throat> is known for its crazy costumes and over-the-top acting, but it is less well-known for social advocacy. However, the first ever interracial kiss on television took place in Star Trek, the original series, <clears throat> between Captain Kirk and Uhura. However, the actors were an integral part of ensuring that this progress took place because both actors ensured that they only succeeded in the takes with the interracial kiss and failed all of the ones without them. Because the actors were focused on social progress, they helped to ensure that there was a change in perceptions regarding interracial relationships on television. And this idea of progress leads us to the quotation we have here from Brett Ratchigoski, which is a Nebraska LGBT activist, which explains, I've always said that Nebraska would be the last one to turn rainbow. Mm. What this quotation is explaining is that our state can be kind of late to the party when it comes to progress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can agree with this quotation today because it shows how important it is to sh focus on being on the front of social progress because it is important. Initially, because it allows us to help the disadvantaged. And second, because it ensures that our society remains relevant. Initially, in Star Trek, the original series, because the actors were focused on advocating for social progress, they ensured that they were able to help disadvantaged people in our society, helping to change the ideas and perceptions regarding interracial relationships. We can explore this further by initially examining the historical figure of Edward Rush II, and second, looking to school days of an Indian girl. Initially, Edward Rush II was the man who created the first ever school for blind people in England in the 1800s. This is because Rush to himself was blind because he was willing to help slave workers on the ship he worked with and caught his disease that ended up costing him his sight. Despite this fact, Rush to remained focused on social progress, ensuring that he could improve rights not only for the slaves in England, but also for people with disabilities. Because of this, he was able to help the disadvantaged, as at that point, anyone who was blind essentially had to live in poverty. Because Edward Rush II was focused on progress, helping to have a school for those with disabilities, he helped those who were disadvantaged in that historic society, and that school remains in place today. Second, we can look to the autobiography School Days of an Indian Girl. In this story, we see Zit Kalasa, a young Native American girl who was taken from her tribe and forced to go to a missionary school. Despite the fact that she did not agree with the education or what was being taught to her, she decided to focus on social progress utilizing her education as a tool to speak out for Native American rights. Because she was focused on social progress, she helped to advance the disadvantaged in society, able to advocate for the rights of Native American and Zen American culture. So through Edward Rush II and School Davis and an Indian Girl, we can see how important it is to remain on the front of social progress to help those who are disadvantaged. In addition, it is also important to remain on the forefront of social progress to allow our society to remain relevant. Even today, the original series is still actually relevant and can help hold up a mirror to us understand our own social, economic, 
and racial relationships in our culture even today. We can explore this further by initially examining the Broadway play Frozen, and second, looking to the historical city-state of Larsa. Initially, let's look to the Broadway play Frozen, and no, it's not the one you are thinking of. <laughs> this one is about serial killers, not singing snowmen. <laughs> it actually came out many years ago and received a great many awards. However, the author eventually realized that she was not on the front of progress because she had not kept up with rules and ideas regarding plagiarism. And it actually plagiarized many of the lines from her play from the work of someone who actually worked with serial killers. Because of this, her play ended up getting rejected by the critics, and she was no longer able to remain relevant as an artist and as a writer because she did not stay in, up on social progress in regards to what was allowed and admissible within academic writing. Second, we can look to the ancient city-state of Larsa and their war with the city-state of Babylonia. Initially, in ancient Mesopotamia, there was a fight between these numerous city-states, and Larsa was the most powerful. However, instead of trying to fight and maintain progress, in their military relations. They simply decided to let Babylon get larger and grow and gain more allies. Because of this, Larsa ended up getting defeated by the Babylonians because they weren't focused on progressing their society. Instead, the Babylonian city-state was focused on progressing their society and thus created the Babylonian Empire. Because Larsa was not focused on progress, they became irrelevant. But because Babylon was, they ended up being victorious. And returning to the statement, from Beth Ragazusto, which explains, I've always said that Nebraska will be the last one to turn rainbow. We can see this quotation is explaining how important it is to be on the forefront of social progress. Initially, because it allows us to help those who are disadvantaged. And second, because it ensures our society can remain relevant. Because the actors in Star Trek, the original series, were focused on social progress, they allowed change to be made. 